Hi, this is Manos Burlakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting video 28.2 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This video discusses about how to prevent radiation injury for both the patient as well as the operator. Radiation injury is one of the non-cardiac acute complications of percutaneous coronary intervention. And we should never forget that although radiation is not visible, we cannot see or feel radiation, but nevertheless, it can hurt both the patient as yourself. And as a result, I strongly urge everyone I train with and everyone I work with to never place their hands under the X-ray beam unless it is a life-threatening emergency. And I always like to think of this image whenever you think or I think about putting my hands under the X-ray. This is what happened to the hands of uh, people who were working with radiation in the early days where the bad effects of radiation were not fully appreciated. So never place your hands under the direct X-ray beam unless it is a life-threatening emergency for the patient. The most common radiation skin injury for the patient happens on the back, and that's at the X-ray entry point. This is how a radiation skin injury looks like, a square on the back of the patient. How much radiation does it take to create such an injury? Well, this depends. Depends on the patient, depends on the entry angle. But these are some common thresholds. And these are the air kerma radiation dose, AK. If it's less than 5, then radiation skin injury is unlikely. Between 5 and 10, it's possible. Between 10 and 15, it's likely. And then more than 15, it is a sentinel event that requires reporting to the regulatory authorities in the United States within 24 hours. So these are five categories of things that we can do to minimize the radiation dose, both before the procedure as well as during the procedure. And we'll go over them one by one. First of all, before the procedure, number one, it is important to plan the procedure carefully. Having a strategic plan, having all the necessary information, such as the anatomy on, in patients who have previous coronary bypass, having reviewed the previous angiogram, so we know where the coronary ostia are located, what to expect in the coronary arteries, and having carefully reviewed all the clinical data will help optimize the procedure, make it faster, and require less radiation. This is an example of a strategic plan in a patient who requires CTO-PCI. The other thing before the procedure is to have uh, the best possible equipment to minimize patient and operator radiation exposure. The new X-ray machines actually give less radiation those than the older ones. So if your cath lab has the privilege of having newer machines, this is wonderful for both the patient and yourself. Also, there are systems like the control rad. There are other systems that are protecting only the operator, such as the zero gravity, robotic PCI, and the EGNES system. So newer X-ray systems do have significantly less radiation a dose for obtaining images compared with older systems. So again, newer systems are prepared, are preferred. However, it's also not only the age of the system, but the optimization as well to make the radiation dose as low as possible. This is another new system called the control rad. What it does is it provides full resolution X-ray on a small part of the screen with less resolution on the remaining part of the screen. And by doing that, significantly reduces radiation. In terms of uh, the operator-only protection, there are systems like the zero gravity, which is a suspended lead that can uh, provide excellent protection. This is one millimeter of lead, but also take the weight off the back and minimize the risk of orthopedic injuries. I have personally been using this for more than a year now in pretty much all my cases. And uh, I must say, I'm delighted to use it. And I really loathe it the moment if I have to scrub in without putting the um, zero gravity, for example, in some emergency cases. So something strongly recommended. Another option to reduce radiation dose for the operator only is to do uh, the robotic PCI for the institutions that have the system available. And this is another system for radiation protection, reducing the scatter radiation to the operator. How about during the procedure? Starting about the radiation use, there should be no pressing the pedal if we are not looking at the screen. I like to call it the heavy foot syndrome, which is especially common at the early stages of training before good habits are being established. We do not want to press the pedal unless we are actively looking at the screen and we are using the information we obtain 
do the x-ray and the imaging. So critical component, minimize how much pressing of the pedal we do. The second thing is to use the balloon and wire markers. We do not need to start fluoroscopy until after the balloon shaft or the stem shaft has reached the 90 centimeter marker for 90 centimeter guides and the 100 centimeter marker for 100 centimeter guides. Another one is to use the trapping technique for equipment exchanges. This is discussed in detail in video 8.4. And essentially the way this is done is uh, by placing a balloon inside the guide catheter. The balloon is inflated, trapping the guide wire. And then the microcatheter can be removed, keeping the wire in place without needing radiation, except for the very beginning to ensure that there is no pulling back of the wire during the initiation of pulling back of the microcatheter. Another way to minimize radiation dose is to use the fluoroscopy store function, which is available in pretty much every contemporary system. This can be used, for example, to document the balloon and stent inflation instead of performing cine angiography that has much higher radiation dose. Essentially, cine angiography is 10 times the dose of fluoroscopy. And finally, another way to minimize radiation use is to use more intravascular imaging for assessing the lesion and the result of percutaneous coronary intervention. Going to the fourth major category for minimizing radiation dose, it has to do with several uh, manipulations that can actually help reduce the dose. First of all, the fluoroscopy rate. Seven and a half should be pretty much standard in every cath lab right now, and even less than that can be used with acceptable image quality. Also, low magnification, so 25 um, uh, centimeters might be better or less, especially in the newer systems that have large screens. Collimation is important. Collimation minimizes the radiation. Um, it does have one potential side effect. This is uh, a patient undergoing LAD PCI many years ago. You see the round uh, uh, X-ray image intensifier image. And then we have this um, collimation here and because of that, we do not really see the distal part of the wire, which has entered into a small branch. And this did lead to a distal vessel uh, perforation. So collimation is important, but always keep in mind that the distal position of equipment, such as wires, should be carefully monitored to make sure it doesn't cause any distal vessel perforation. Interestingly enough, we had a recent publication looking at how often collimation is used during live cases at major meetings. And we were actually surprised that they were only used uh, in about 30% of cases. So in 70% of cases, there was no use at all of collimation during those live cases. Fourth measure for reducing radiation dose during the case is to avoid extreme angles. The more angulation we use, the higher the dose, because the depth of penetration needed by the X-ray is longer. Also, the patient should be optimally positioned. The table should be as high as possible, and the image receptor should be as low as possible, ideally touching the patient. And then there are options about real-time radiation dose monitoring. Uh, we can look at the side of the screen, and actually for every X-ray system, there is a dose rate that is being displayed as fluoroscopy is being performed that can help optimizing. You want to keep it less than 20 milligray per minute. Also, there are systems for both measuring the radiation of the uh, operators in real time, and those can provide feedback if uh, excessive uh, radiation doses are being received. And then finishing up, another way to protect the operators is to use shielding. The simplest way is to take a step back. The further away that the operator is back, the much less the radiation. That's the inverse square law. One way to help with that is to use um, manifold tubing extensions. You can see here the manifold is fairly close to the patient, but with an extension, the manifold can go way back. Therefore, at least the second operator can also the first operator can move further back and receive less radiation dose. Also, placing the seals is critical. If the seal is placed here, that doesn't do any good preventing radiation exposure of the operator. This is where the seal should be. It should be. Uh, next to the patient at the entry point, the X-ray beam hits the patient and then gets reflected to the operator. So the radiation screen, the shield, should be actually low, 
next to the radiation entry point. And then there are also some disposable radiation seals like the rat pad that can be used to minimize patient radiation exposure. And as we discussed before, there is also the zero gravity system additional shielding for the patient. So to summarize, radiation is bad, but we do have several ways to minimize radiation dose, both before and during the procedure. Having meticulous attention to radiation dose can truly minimize the risk of a patient having radiation skin injury, but also of the operator having high doses during the long run that can also lead to significant complications. Thank you.